it's uh, Jay from My Wonder UK, day uh, four of the uh, Devon coast to coast or Two Moors Way, same thing. Uh, it was a cold night last night, went down to three degrees, but I was all right, come up with a little contingency plan, perhaps tell you about it later. I've got a few miles to catch up today. My uh, tendons gave out on me yesterday and I stopped short. I wanted to get to Chuckford Common. Sorry, pause for a minute there. And I got to Grimm's Pound or Grimes Pound, the uh, like old, ancient old village place. So I've got three or four miles to catch up with Chagwood Common and I had a really quite a long day anyway. So I've got to get to Chagwood Common, Drewsley, and I want to try and get as far as Hitsley, I want to say. I know I'm not pronouncing those right, but I'm trying. Uh, it's about half eight in the morning i've had to wait for the sun to come up just to dry the tent out a little bit it didn't rain last night it's just got soaking with the morning dew and that'd be my first port of call in a minute or two well 15 or 20 minutes or so still got to pack the tent away yet give me a chance and catch up with us soon and we off as always last little look around leave no trace hey and we're going off up there Say goodbye to Grimm's Pound. From uh, Grimm's Pound, got these uh, granite blocks in there. They're huge. I wonder if these were part of the settlement so they could get up on this hill. We're on top of a uh, Hookney tour now. Give you a quick spin round of what the views are we've got open today. We're heading that direction, but then we're cutting back across this way. At this gate, you need to be uh, bearing to your left, so not ahead where the wall path is, uh, the walled wall, <laughs> stone wall, but across to this way. Oh, look, who's that following me? little indicator first thing in the morning and it's not first thing in the morning to be honest but as a rough guide shadow in front of me I'm guessing that must be going west I'm walking in the westerly direction because the sun rising in the east as we all know is behind me roughly we've walked uh, 15 maybe 20 minutes in a westerly direction uh, roughly west we've come down, gone over a road, back up another ascent, down a slight ascent, and we're heading towards that car park there, centre of screen now, across the road, to the left slightly, and then following the contour of the side of this one here, going down towards those woods. After the old gnarly cross and the car park across the road, find one of these paths coming over here but you can just still see the tip of the woodland over the top there we need to get up there once you found the contour and uh, sort of turned round I guess on yourself you're heading in a generally northerly direction but uh, I'll try and zoom in so you've got a little bit of a landmark to aim for I'd just say the big lump there and the big lump with some rocks on the top of it. You're heading in that general direction, you're doing all right. Bearing in mind that's only to start off with and it will change, but just to get you going. When you get to this cow, start aiming more to the right of the lump in front of you with the building on it. Another clue would be the woods on the left hand side of the cow just go, just as the wood starts there, approximately. And you'll start going to the right of that lump in front of us. When you get to these two cows, and there's a couple of sheep as well for a good indication, look straight in front of you. And if you aim for that bit of woodland and there's a little road there and you're on the right way. Another one, look to your left. The ends of the wood has come up now and there's a granite stone post there. But we're going this way. Is that cow with horns lets me. 
We'll see. The path you need to be following along Hurston Ridge. Another little clue is this double set of uh, stones coming all the way down there. You can see pictures of it in the book coming down, but I thought I'd take one from further away. Go down to that way. This is uh, Chagford Common, and you can really see the landscape ahead of us changing now. There's some lumps over on that side. Hold on, I'll stop so I'm not wobbly. Ones we used as markers earlier on. And there's quite a big one just there. You can see in front of it flattening out. I'm going to say flattening out, but you know, you know it's not going to be flat. We're not in Norfolk. I'm um, at the top end of Chagford Common now which was my aim point for last night, night three. And just having a quick look, I could have found something over there, I guess. I was trying to get a bit of shelter if it was westerly from the trees, etc. But, let's be honest, it's an hour and 20 minutes since I left this morning. Could I got another hour and 20 minutes? Possibly, but I was pushing it, I was knackered from experience. I know when I'm tired, I start making mistakes and I don't want to be doing that at the end of the day. My body had had enough and I knew it was going to be cold last night so I wanted plenty of time to secure a site, get my tent up and get inside it. So the bit where I was last night was really interesting anyway, Grim's Pound, and it was sheltered from the wind so I'm happy with it. Decision made. An hour 20 added to today. Not added, extra. Bonus extra. Just got to the other end of Chagford Common and it's about an uh, hour and a half. Reflecting on my decision from yesterday, and I'm I'm happy with it. I don't think I would have done it. My legs are getting tired again today because they always do. I don't think I could have done it. And this morning, the big thing to consider is one, I wasn't tired, but two, I had a brand new pair of legs on. Previously enjoyed, obviously, but yesterday I had a ragged pair on. So I don't think I would have actually made it through to here without some pain and probably worse pain today. So. I'm going to live with the decision and move on to today's walk. Take a look at this wall, it's amazing. Gaps in and everything. But how long has that been standing there for? Who knows. We're following this up to the end there and looking for a turn left. After following that wall along on your left hand side, you start to descend, 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 come up to a cattle grid ahead and you're looking for a left turn. I think it's Fenworthy, but we'll see. After finding the turning left, it is finger post. Uh, past one farmhouse and through a sort of segment of another couple, through a few fields, and then you drop down onto this lovely stream and we're looking for a footbridge, I thought. I overshot by about 100 metres, so we hit the stream, turn left. Come back from that, but I can't see an obvious route down through here, so... That does seem to be the way. So you get to the bottom of it, hit the stream, turn left for 100 metres. Just over the footbridge, a lovely little wild camping spot with the stream, obviously, as we just gone over for your water source in the morning, but a great outlook. Disturbing nobody, just saying. But we're going up this to try and find Tinworthy. Perhaps even better at the top of that slope. One, you don't have to do it in the morning. Two, your tent will dry out a lot easier in the sun because it's easily facing at the top. Nice outlook as well. As you wander along the path of a uh, great French beer, what a name. Take a look to the right and I think that could be Chagford Church just in the distance there which is a nice landmark we don't actually go into Chagford but it's always good to have a little landmark from the view from a French beer basically through a few fields several gates several styles uh, some duck boards and you end up in this wood and it actually looks dark in here there's a little bit of dappled sun coming through but it's dark and cold another level Great wild camping spot just after the duck boards, second lot. Camel head. You come through the last field and then down the farmer's track and then down to my favourite for a little bit. Yeah, tarmac, bit of road work. 
got to be there to join the paths up, I understand, but when the road bends to the right, there's another smaller road that goes straight on. Take the one that's straight on, like this one. Keep on with the road book all the way down and eventually get to a crossroad and the sign for Chagford, modern sign, you need to turn sharp left there along this boundary walls on both sides of the track. And hopefully there's a turning right and takes us on the other side of the river. Hoping it's going to be pleasant. Over the bridge and a sharp right and you're basically following the river on the right hand side of me now. A much lovelier walk rather than that roadwork stuff. Fantastic little spot just after the bridge at Chagford. 100 metres up down the footpath. But tuck in there for a night. That would be east facing in the morning. Get up early, get gone. But we're heading out this way. There's lots of great wild camping opportunities down that bit. From Chagford Bridge where you cross over. There's pastures, but they haven't had cattle in. Flat you can tuck yourself out and, and if not, you can get into the woodland, inside the woodlands level as well. So, bonus. The path uh, diverts away from the river slightly, then can, cuts back over to Pushford Bridge. As you come through the gate there, you need to turn sharp left on the road, not right, left. Walk down till you get to Chagford Swimming Pool. Past the Swimming Pool, about 100 metres, there's a house and a sharp turn in right, you're back on the path again. I've been uh, going for 30 minutes now since the Chagford Bridge and it's all just pastures and nice little woodlands. There's so many wild camping opportunities, it's untrue. I'm going to get down by the river, nice little one down there. It'll be a lovely place to visit again. Put it on my list. Just very pleasant walking, it's on the level. You've got the sound of the river running on the right hand side and nothing drastic yet. Totally different from the moors. That'd be Castle Drogo up there. Cool. Apparently, uh, I think it's the newest one in the country. Youngest, whatever you call it. I don't think I'd be getting any closer, unfortunately. couldn't resist taking five minutes and uh, uh, getting to that lovely cold water on my tendons and my feet. Oh, it's just gorgeous. It is very cold. When you get to this bridge, we need to take a sharp left going up there. The ascent from the castle, sorry, going to the castle, starts off in uh, woodland from that bridge. It goes into this tarmac path. The stroll up, and I did stroll up, is only about 15 minutes. I took it really easy. And then basically you come in right back on yourself. See the finger post there? And back over to here. Literally uh, five minutes after the gate, coming to a finger post like on a T-junction and you need to turn the sharp left. And you'd be heading out on here. I think they call it Hunter's Path or something. We're walking out on this route now. Very nice, with a nice view. I would imagine that's the uh, where the river's running down at the bottom. We've just gained some elevation by zigzagging, tacking. There's a buzzard flying around up there. I'm sure you won't be able to see it. I'm not even going to try. Oh, no. Go on, I will. Just there. So look at the views from up here. There's the path that we're walking on, coming up the hill there. I would say there in the distance would be Chagford, I'm going to say. Yeah, Chagford. The hill behind it.
quite a drop down. Twenty five thirty minutes after the path up to Castle Drago that you don't go up the sign unless you want to of course. We've got this next one and there's us. We're going up there. And then we're just across the cattlefield and the uh, welcome site of Drew's comes into the sign. I don't know why I do this. That way's avoiding steps. This way's not. You know which way I'm going, don't you? So predictable. There wasn't that many of them. Enough to make your knees throb slightly. Maybe throb's too big a word. Um, tremble. If you're coming down those steps or the other way, the rest of your slope. Don't let excitement take over your resolve. As you get to the bottom of it, there's a bridal wave ascending. It's not too bad, but just when you think you're going down. Hi there, I've uh, finished off from a day, I've changed my plans again. I stopped in Drew Staten, I think that's how you pronounce it, and I was going to go out another three or four miles from Wild Camp, but when I walked through the village, I saw the pub's got a, a sign for bunk rooms. So I asked inside, they said, oh yeah, they're 20 quid a night, and I thought, can't really miss out on that. It's going to be cold again tonight, three, maybe four degrees, and I thought a bit of luxury wouldn't harm. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is uh, this is what you get for your twenty quid. You've uh, previously enjoyed bedwear, but there's the shower. I'm not grumbling about it. I'll up you, update you more <laughs> if I survive the night. Cheers. I've cleaned another pair of socks. I don't think there's any point in even washing those. Did it? You can make a poppy glove out of it, I guess, but no. Nah. That's where they're going. Trying to do a bit of an update for uh, day four. Uh, started off at where did I start off? Grimm's Pound, which was a little bit short of my journey. I needed to get to Chagford Common, that was about an hour and a half walk, but that was a pleasant enough walk. There's a little bit of elevation, but not very much. And then you and the going underfoot's really well good. Come down to Yardworthy and across to French beer. I'm not sure if it's called Great French Beer. And that's a pleasant enough walk with some really good outlets. You can see Chagford from there. And it's basically a little bit of mm, road work, I'm afraid. Yeah, but it's all right. It's pleasant, just undulating all the way down. But it's quite a long way. When you get to Chagford, the signpost for the village, it's a different story. You go left over the bridge there, and then you're following the river all the way down. The opportunities there for wild camping is just amazing all the way through there. When you get through Sandy Park and you need to turn left going uphill to Castle Drogo is a, a long bridge where I dipped my feet, which was very nice. I have got took a picture of it. I'll flash it up here somewhere, there somewhere, I don't know. You need to go up the hill, which isn't too bad. Cut back on yourself, you're zigzagging, tic-tacking. And then the footpath follows the contour all the way around and the views from up there are just yeah, quite amazing. You can see all the way back to Chadford and all the way down the valley. Really nice. Uh, from there, you follow the path. As soon as you see the sign for Castle Drogo going up off of that contour walk, go past that and a little bit further, there's a shop turning left. You go up in there 
uh, a slight ascend uphill and then a downhill. And don't make the mistake like I did, thinking, oh yeah, I'm on the way down into, I'm going to just read it off of here, Drew Stinton. Drew Stinton is where I'm going to go for. You come down the hill and you're all full of joy because there's another uphill as you get to the bride away. Not too far, but it's just one of those that can just demotivate you at the end of the day. And then a nice little pleasant walk right at the end of there, just into Drew, Drew Staten. Beautiful church, pub, and they did bunk rooms. And unfortunately, that's where I ended up. Oh, did I say unfortunately? They do a great pint in the pub. The bunk room and bathrooms leave something to be desired. And I'm used to roughing it. But I'm not complaining. Been a good day, I've caught up. But unfortunately, because I stopped here for the night, instead of getting through to Hittersley, I've got an extra three to four miles to put on tomorrow's, but that's the story of my life, just playing catch up. Thanks for joining us. Uh, hopefully you keep up with me tomorrow.